Thanks, guys. First, I was in an accident. Second, I made a video thanking Lopro that they saved a ton of my gear. Here's the story that you guys really don't know. I was contacted by Lopro. A friend of mine had sent my story to Lopro and they contacted me and said I could pick any bag I wanted. And they just sent me their very new latest Whistler bag. I took a big beating and lost a lot of gear and lost a lot of money in that accident. And I got back practically nothing. So getting an absolutely pro grade travel bag right before I head off to LA for a shoot is just amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you Lopro. You have a loyal customer for the rest of my life. So I've been running around like crazy just trying to get everything done before I have to leave for LA. I have a school assignment that's due yesterday, so I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a hit on that, but uh, there's nothing I can do to help that. So there's a big problem that I've been dealing with lately. Some of you may know that I sold the vlogging camera that I purchased not long ago, which was the Panasonic G7. And it was a very interesting camera. I will say there was a lot I loved about it, but there was probably more that I hated about it than loved. So yeah, I can't do that. Turns out actually I sold it to Tommy J because Tommy J has been wanting to get into photography. And I think as a stills camera, I think it excels really well, but I think as a vlogging camera, it has a lot of shortcomings. The main one being the low light situation on Micro Four Thirds. Now, if that sounds like a different language to you, that's basically just the sensor size. You know that part that you're ne taught to never touch inside a camera? Basically, each sensor has a different size. Well, the sensor on that particular camera is really old and very small and pretty outdated. And it's called Micro Four Thirds. I'm not really a fan of it. A lot of people are because if you have a really great lens, you can get some great images out of Micro Four Thirds. But I try not to put a ton of money into a vlogging camera just because I know I'm going to be eventually beating it up. And right now, I'm not at the point I'm not at the point to where I can afford to do something like that. Now one thing I will say though is that because I'm doing more and more with film, my budget for a vlogging camera has gone up. So that's great. I am in the market again to look for a vlogging camera, but there's just a, there's something with every single one of them. They're just not as good as my hair right now. I don't know guys, I feel like I should be cutting it, you know? I just feel like it might be getting too long. I don't know if I want to rock the long hair again. Comment below if you think I should cut it or let it go or whatever. But basically, like, so right now I'm shooting my A6500 and the beauty about the A6500 is it has a mic input. And that means I can use this microphone right here. So that means I can catch better audio, it's more crisp, it's more clear, it takes all that wind noise out. When I use my old A5100, there's no mic input, but it has a flip out screen. Does the 6500 have a flip out screen? It does not. So I can't even see myself right now, so I don't even know if I'm in frame, I don't know if I'm in focus, I don't know what the exposure is like, and that's always an important thing that you need to know as a vlogger. Now one of the beauties about today's day and age is just about every big camera out there shoots 1080 at 60p, which is nice, but it's hard to find one with the flip out screen. Isn't that right, Jeremy? That's exactly right. See, he knows. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. I have about. no idea what he just said. Yeah, but he agrees though. I agree. See, he agrees.
So I just bought a very cool item. Now some of you may know or may not know, but I have a slider. But I just picked this one up. Check out this little bad boy. See what he does here. So this is my FS5. I threw a little grip on it, trying to make it as compact as possible. Now you're probably like, well, that's such a tiny little slider, you know, like look, it goes in here and like, this is it. That's it, that's the only like space you have. Ah, but that is not so. This is approximately about 13 inches. Now, right here on the bottom, there is a mount for a tripod. So here's what happens when you mount this on a tripod. Instead of just going from right to left, the whole base is going to move now. So now, you basically double the length. So therefore, it's perfect because I have this small, tiny little compact slider that I can throw in my backpack, I think, at least in my suitcase for sure. Not my FS5 on with no problem. Anyway guys, I still have some school assignments I have to get in and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here. So I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning because then I'll be heading to Daytona to then head to Orlando to then head to LA. I'll see you guys then.